Hello, my name is Matt and this is Pixel Burn, where I take a look at some of the more interesting things that happened in gaming news this week. After I've got the obvious PS4 elephant in the room out of the way first. In a departure from the regular Pixel Burn format this week, I'm going to be covering the bigger topic first and leaving the smaller news tidbits towards the end. Because in case you hadn't noticed, there's a new console out this week. My doesn't time fly. On Friday, the titanic global mega corporation Sony released their own 8th generation console offering to the world, or rather North America, which is pretty much the whole world to some people. Alas, the rest of us have to wait a little longer before we can get our hands on it, depending on where in the world we live. If you're in Europe, Australia or Brazil, then you'll have to wait until November the 29th before you can get your mitts on a PS4. Other regions will be getting theirs throughout the month of December, all except Japan, however. It won't be getting theirs until February 2014. The original PlayStation took over 10 months after its Japanese release to reach North America and Europe respectively. PS2 on the other hand took only 7 to reach North America and 8 to reach Europe, while the PS3 narrowed that gap to 6 days for North America and 4 months for Europe. Now we're in a situation where Japan gets the newest PlayStation last. Which is weird for someone like me who's grown up with Japanese consoles always coming out in Japan first and then eventually making their way over here a year later or something stupid like that. It's kind of like if Fortnum and Masons released a new brand of tea in America before the UK. <coughs> and since the PS4 will also be region free, barring games whose publishers choose to region lock them for some god awful bloody stupid reason, yes Persona 4 Arena I'm looking at you, we may well have the bizarre scenario of eager Japanese PlayStation fans importing a Japanese made console from outside their country. Speaking of games, there are a decent number of PS4 titles available at launch, although a lot of them, such as Battlefield 4, Call of Duty Ghosts and Assassin's Creed Black Flag, have already come out on PlayStation 3 and other platforms. Among the bona fide PS4 exclusives is Knack, which has received less than enthusiastic critical response from the gaming press, and Killzone Shadowfall, for fans of Killzone. So exclusive wise, the PS4 is off to something of a rather modest start, to put it kindly. The real eye catches in a PS4 launch lineup, however, were among the indie offerings, and not all of them are exclusive to the console. Starting with Contrast, a puzzle platformer set in a surreal interpretation of the 1920s in which you play a troubled girl's imaginary friend who can turn into a shadow and climb on other shadows to move around. When you're not being all Chiara Scuro, you can move objects and light sources around in the real world to make platforms and things for when you're a shadow again. Visually, it looks a lot like the result of an illicit tryst between The Great Gatsby and Pan's Labyrinth inside the cabinet of Dr. Caligari, and sports a luscious period soundtrack featuring contemporary jazz singer Laura Ellis. PlayStation Plus subscribers get contrast for absolutely free. It's also available for PC and Xbox 360. From the creator of Super Stardust HD comes Resogun, packed with the kind of epilepsy-inducing visuals they began slapping warning labels on back in the late 90s. It's basically Defender, albeit on steroids and God knows what other illicit chemicals. Alright, so it's basically Defender on steroids and a ton of other drugs. At a rave. But Defender is a classic for a reason, and this looks to be a more than worthy successor. Resogun is also available to PlayStation Plus subscribers for zero pennies, and is a genuine PS4 exclusive to boot. Finally, there's Super Motherload, a Terraria meets Spelunky affair with RPG elements, where you and up to three friends riddle a procedurally generated Martian underground with more holes in Swiss cheese. You and your chums collect fat mineral ores to sell for cash to upgrade your digging machines while trying to discover what happened to the previous dig team who all mysteriously disappeared before you arrived. The game promises a branching storyline with multiple endings, over 150 puzzles and a whopping great boss fight, among other things. It's exclusive to PS4 at launch, but a PC version is coming sometime in summer 2014. There are also some fun free-to-play jobbies to enjoy, such as Blacklight Retribution, a sci-fi FPS with inbuilt wall hacks that are actually part of the gameplay. It's also got mech suits in it, so if Killzone Shadowfall doesn't float your particular boat, you can always give Blacklight Retribution a try. And if you've ever wanted to dabble in an MMO but didn't want to pay a monthly fee and can't stand elves, DC Universe Online is also available free to play on PS4. The game recently received a graphical overhaul for its PS4 release that also applies to the PC version, and if you have friends who play the PS3 version, you can still play it with them. It's also more of an action RPG a la Diablo than other MMOs, so you don't just stand around hammering hotkeys all the time. All in all, a rather humdrum affair speckled with some genuine diamonds of interest. But hey, it's a launch lineup. What did you expect? Sorry, Sunshine, no watchdogs for you. At least not until 2014.
Cocky, swaggering, brown-haired murderer of indigenous peoples Nathan Drake, star of the Uncharted series, is confirmed to be heading off on yet another blood-soaked genocidal outing. As Sony were gearing up to launch the PS4, they announced Uncharted 4 will be coming to the new console at some indeterminate point in the future. So much for all new franchises for an all new generation, eh? All we have to go on right now is this teaser trailer panning over an oldie timey map of the southern tip of Africa, heading towards Madagascar, presumably the only country left in which the murderous shadow of Nathan Drake hasn't left, grieving widows and orphans in its wake. Maybe if they close their ports and airports in time, like in Pandemic 2, they can avoid an untimely genocide by smart ass. Fans of the deep space roguelike FTL faster than light might be pleased to know the game is getting a chunk of extra content. The imaginatively titled FTL Advanced Edition takes the gameplay of FTL and advances it, adding new toys to play with like a mind control system that lets you subvert enemy crew to help your ship and hinder theirs. You'll also be able to hack an enemy ship systems to do things like lock down their weapons, flush them out of their own airlocks, or even turn their med bay into a chamber of pain. FDL Advanced Edition will also feature new ships, ship weapons, ship upgrades, hostile environments, weapons and a whole new sector with new random events, written by none other than Chris Avalone. And if you don't know who he is then I'm very disappointed in you. Chris Avalone was only the lead designer on Planescape Torment, perhaps the best written game ever, absolutely bar sodding none. No ifs, no buts, no arguments, it's absolute scientific fact, so I don't think you can persuade me otherwise. You might as well ask, what can change the nature of a man? In FTL's case, well, plenty of lasers can't hurt. For FTL purists who can barely restrain themselves from vomiting at the idea of anything that could make the game easier, all these new additions will be entirely optional. You can carry on playing the vanilla game to your heart's content as if nothing ever happened. You won't even have paid a penny for it either, since the update will be completely and utterly free to existing owners of the game. If you don't own FTL because you don't have a PC and are watching this video on an iPad or something, you'll soon be able to buy a version of FTL Advanced Edition for that as well. Versions for Android tablets and other touchy feed devices are also being looked into. And finally, Valve lived up to their reputation of existing in an entirely different time stream to the rest of us by forgetting about Halloween. Specifically, Diatide, the name of their Halloween event for Dota 2 in which players fight each other for sweeties and vanity items rather than points or while an otherwise agoraphobic boss monster called Roshan leaves his lair to bully said players for said sweeties. In response, the so-called community threw their metaphorical toys out the pram and had a whopping great hissy fit. Never mind that Valve had released a big update called First Blood at the end of September which added land play, captain's draft, improved armour and a ton of bug fixes and other things, nor that Valve were busy working on another update called Three Spirits that updated an existing hero and added two more, not to mention also adding a coaching mode, crafting system, new item socketing mechanics, as well as another bevy of bug fixes, items and other tweaks. Nope, no, Dota 2 fans wanted the game map to look like fucking Halloween Town and to fight over fake sugary treats. So much so in fact that they spammed the Facebook pages for Volvo, Barack Obama and other unrelated parties with stupid GIVE DIETIDE messages. That is of course when they weren't review bombing Dota 2's Metacritic user score, like anyone actually gives two shits about that particular peanut gallery. One posse of entitled toss rags with the patience of a mayfly with ADD and all the social awareness of a turd on a dead cat even harassed Dota 2 developer team member Matthew Bailey with a barrage of phone calls to his personal number. In short, a prime example of too many morons and not enough nerve gas. To stem the tide of idiocy, Valve apologised for forgetting about Diatide and have included it with the new Three Spirits update I mentioned earlier, which is now live. So to everyone who took part in this fuckwit jamboree, well done you. Enjoy your fake pets, your fake sweets and your fake sense of superiority for all of the two fucking weeks Diatide will be active for. That's all for this episode of Pixel Burn. If you enjoyed it, please do let me know either by leaving a comment below or even dropping me a like if you're so generously inclined. At the very least, I hope you found it tolerable. If you didn't enjoy it, however, then you really should stop watching this far. Just sending me mixed signals. You can go now. <laughs>